Good afternoon and you are very welcome to Twickenham on the outskirts of London for this Guinness Six Nations Round 3 Game 3 on what we expect to be an absolute thriller. It has all the characters and all the plot lines that you would want from a good thriller. We will see if that plays out in reality as Ireland and England both gather underneath the stands and ready themselves to walk out to this wonderful stadium, 82,000 capacity, and a cracking atmosphere has been building here all afternoon. The conditions, well, it is extremely windy. However, it's a bowl, and therefore the wind should not have as big an impact on the game as it might have had otherwise. Jonathan Joseph leads out. The English side, Joseph, winning his 50th cap today, made his debut against South Africa in 2012. He's followed out by the captain, Owen Farrell, and Ireland make their way out to our right and wide. And Owen Farrell, of course, the captain of England, the inspirational leader of England, as you look at Joseph. And, of course, his father is the coach of the opposing side. There's his opposing captain, Jonathan Sexton, who makes his 91st international appearance today for Ireland. He is the talisman that Ireland will look to to lead this side, an Irish side that has gone so well so far, beat Scotland in round one, beat Wales at home in round two. This is their first away game in the Guinness Six Nations for England. It's a first home game, having lost to France in week one, they beat Scotland in atrocious conditions. You could really draw no conclusion as to their shape or their ability, but they won nonetheless in week two. This, their first game at home since that Rugby World Cup final defeat to South Africa in Japan a couple of now long months ago. Time for the anthems. A powerful rendition. So often, home advantage counts for so much in this great championship. It's 2006 since there were three away wins. We've already had two this weekend as England line out Marler, George and Sinclair, Itoje and Cruz. There's plenty of second row backup through this English team. Laws, Curry and Underhill are the back row. Questions about Curry at eight. We will see if they're answered today. Youngs and Ford at nine and ten. Farrell and the returning to Alagi. How fit is he is key. Joseph moves to the wing for his first international start on the wing in his 50th international cap. Elliot Daly at full back. 
Here's Ireland. Keely Herring and Furlong, a capable and competent front row. Devon Toner in for his first start since being left out of the World Cup squad alongside James Ryan. Stander, man of the match twice for Ireland so far. Murray and Sexton in nine and ten. Aki and Henshaw will be really tested defensively today. Stockdale and Conway, either side of the electric feet of Jordan Larmer. And then we have the replacement benches and England have gone for some heavyweight meat in that eight. You look at launch for Yules Earl. And really, you look at that and you think, if plan A doesn't work for England, well, what's plan B? Maybe they won't need one. Alongside me is Dowie Morris. Well, we'll have to see, but two coaches with differing selection policies. Jones content with his annoying tactic of picking people not in their preferred position or even their best position. And Farrell, post the Joe Schmidt era, has gone and given his players, players a license to thrill. Get the ball wide and make the game wonderful. We are hoping for a wonderful game. We got a wonderful game yesterday as France and Wales went toe to toe. France winning by 27 points to 23 in the other game. Scotland shutting out Italy by 17 points to nil. But all eyes now are on Twickenham. And the referee today is a South African Jakob Paper. Roman Poit and Alex Roos run the lines. And Marius Jonker is the television match official. We're underway at Twickenham in what we hope will be an absolute belter in England. Kick to Ireland, who keep the ball in hand, and Murray was ice cool there as he drew the attacker and then passed out to Stander. And you wonder about the momentum and the requirements of this game. If England, you feel, get a head start, it will be so difficult for Ireland to come back. Conversely, Ireland score early, and those seeds of doubt that seem to be there for so many, Dowie, might creep in for England. It might do. It's, it's all about momentum. We talk about it. it is the buzzword they use in rugby, the professional game now. Get your momentum, get your points on the board, and make the other team set. You know, you've, they've got to follow you, basically. Young's forward, and a first carry for... To Alagi and it's Stander and Sexton who combined to put him down. Ford has gone high, high, and this one will be a real competition. And it's won by England and by Elliot Daly. And they have options down the short side. A little kick in behind was not what was required from Cruz. There's a reason big men are asked to carry rather than kick, and I think it was just proved there. Ireland will be thankful to get possession back because that was a good carry and kick, and now it's Sexton who goes cross-field, and Joseph is out there, but Daly will be the one who takes it. Elliot Daly, 42nd international cap, cuts back inside, Tyke Furlong tries to get a hold of the ball, almost did, but it's still there for England, and the ball's still in play. There's a dominant tackle. If you want a, uh, an explanation or an illustration of what a dominant tackle looks like, that's it, as England go high to the sky again and Larmer will be under this one beaten once already and beaten again this time by Johnny May Youngs is screaming for Irish hands to get off it and the ball is there for Cruz it's all action in this opening two minutes Ford Daly in behind that's a good kick Murray's going to need to be quick and he is gets there but also gets daily now will ireland be pinged for holding on on the ground no says the referee it's there but england have started this one with real accuracy in all that they've done and ireland just haven't been able to get their hands on the ball well murray did superbly well and then he had to do superbly well he's come back now and he's back on his feet he'd be looking to box kick this but kicking the ball right out to touch give his forwards a breather it's been an electrifying start from england it is the rule of the boot. We knew there was going to be plenty of kicks up in the air, but England are reclaiming those on two of those occasions. Yeah, it is worth reiterating about the conditions. It's a very, very strong breeze outside the stadium, but because of the bowl-like nature of Twickenham, not too bad down on ground level. Particularly, you would think for the hookers, it should be OK. When the kicks go up high, it does become a factor. To a laggy midfield. That's why he's back. That's why he, they missed him. Stander puts him down, but it's all forward momentum for England from a ball-carrying perspective. And Ireland are just having to make those energy-sapping tackles. Around the back comes Joseph. Aki and Henshaw try to rip the ball, but 
It's held on to by England's wingman. Sinclair, lovely little pop pass to George. Great work by the prop forward. He's got all the skills. England are menacing. Youngs, they've got numbers out wide. The crowd sense they might be onto an early try, but Tuolagi's put down. Conway made the tackle. Still, though, just five metres short, and it's taken on by Joe Marler. Healy makes the tackle. Itoje told to leave it alone, because Courtney Laws is coming. And the pass was just a little too high, and it was knocked forward. And I think Ireland are being given the advantage. No more than that, because it was definitely knocked forward from the hands of Courtney Laws. And Devon Toner does a big clear-out job, and he caught Rob Herring in the process. But after all that... It's a mighty sigh of relief for the men in green and an absolute accurate opening four minutes from England. England are delighted to be at home and they're absolutely fizzing at the moment in every aspect, apart from that one mistake when Cruz tried to kick the ball through, everything has gone to hand. All the big forwards, this is, you asked about Tuolangi's he's match fitness. Well, he can't be 100% match fit, but what he can do is that. And then the big lads then, Courtney Law's carrying the ball, he's strapped onto the side of the scrum, he's normally a second row playing a flanker, and now you think for all of the money, this should be really a score, but they do well, Ireland, they scramble back well, Tuolangi goes down, presents the ball, and this is where the little mistake, I think, happens. Actually Pass went... wasn't sympathetic, no. was it? <laughs> now, you won't thank them for it, but again, Eddie Jones would be delighted with the start. Like I said, England, they've been away twice, they've come back to Twickenham, and it is not an easy place to come and get a win, and that's what Ireland are playing for the Triple Crown, but they know they're going to have to play very well to achieve that. Well, there's the scrum statistics. Ireland penalised three times in the competition so far from their 22 scrums, and there was all sorts of debate about the scrummaging technique of Tyke Furlong in the intervening weeks since the Wales match. There is no doubt this is a big test, and both sides, if they can get a squeeze on, will use this as a weapon. I have a sense it could end up being... A little bit more even than well, that. Well, England are going to go for this. They're going to put every ounce into this scrum. Absolutely. And Ireland lock it out. That's good from Ireland. Excellent. Stander to Murray. And that's about as competent and accurate an exit as Ireland could have hoped for. Parity all round in that scrum. And if that stays all day and the scrum stay up, we're going to have a good game. Because um, it is my bugbear that... The clock just keeps ticking on every time the scrum goes down. We lose so much game time within that, but that was a good scrum. The ball gets away, and now Jamie George throws in at the line-out. A shortened line-out for England. Down from Youngs to Ford and then to Alagi. Well, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen off those platforms of midfield and scrums. Here's Youngs once more, narrower of the two sides. Good pass out, and George finds a little bit of gas on the, on the wing. O'Mahony dives on the ball, but it beats them all into touch, and I think, yes, it is, a throw-in to England. There's been a lot of talk about Jamie Joseph on the wing, Jamie George on the wing, <laughs> but he can motor this lad. Again, putting people in positions is fine, as long as they know what to do. He's a tremendous footballer, and this is interesting. Tua Lange now on two occasions have gone straight at Johnny Sexton. They're trying to get him to make those big tackles. Obviously, he's a key playmaker for Ireland, so he doesn't really want to be in that role, but England are playing so far out, another shortened line-out, that's where they're going to attack again, I'm sure. Yeah, you could probably set your clock by, but that didn't look straight. The referee's happy to let it go, but they've changed the attack. Cross field it goes, and Larmer did really well because he lost it there for a moment. And well to recover. He was having to readjust because I think he was expecting the run in midfield, but all this seven minutes has been played in Ireland's half. Devon Toner on the carry. 81% possession so far for England. Crucially, though, from their perspective, no points to show for it. Murray launches that one. Stockdale's after it. Johnny May gathers it, doesn't go into touch. And England have possession again. Everything is going England's way. Every ball seems to be falling their way, or they're catching everything. Sinclair was upended, but the referee says all good. And Laws is just a machine. And there's the benefit of having the big second row playing in the number six shirt and the kick in behind. And this is a foot race. Who's going to get there? Ball bounces up. Could go anywhere. It goes England. George Ford capitalizes on a rugby ball bouncing that can make you look very, very silly at times. Wonderful kick. All the territory, all the possession, and like you said, Ryle, no points. Well, there is points now, there's five, there soon will be seven. Again, turning Ireland around, Ireland haven't settled, using the big runners, putting the grubber through, that's Young's excellent grubber, you think Farrell can get it? No, Sexton's there, 
and he isn't. Two tens against each other, only one winner, and that's George Ford, but it comes from this, again, exquisite little grubber through. They're pulling him left, they're pulling him right, they're going straight through the middle, and this is a tremendous start from England. What's been interesting about England, we were all expecting the two Alagi carry in midfield, and what they've done is they've varied the theme and they've really kept Ireland's defence guessing. They've pulled them one way and then the other, and eventually it just cracked with a sublime kick from Youngs. It's just about the physical, physical presence, really, of the English forwards as well, because, again, they're carrying the ball, and that all makes the sort of Irish forwards have to retreat, and then all... You've got two playmakers out there with Ford and Farrell. We know that anyway, and at the moment they're pulling the strings. They're the master puppeteers. This is just a bit of luck, unfortunately. Sexton is normally so good in, def in, in a defensive role. It's just one of those things. Ben Youngs, well, he wasn't around last week or the week before last, and I think he's made his point in the opening, what, <laughs> 10 minutes? I think so. Joseph gathers the restart in Ireland, make a, well, I think, first sojourn into the English 22, but they don't have the ball, and Youngs will complete the exit. And from Ireland's perspective, Dowie, it's now really about settling getting a hold of some ball, going through some patterns and just working their way into this game because they haven't been in the game other than defensively. Andy Farrell's biggest test. You could say Scotland were the better team in that first first round of the, of the Six Nations. It doesn't really matter. They got through that. I thought they were outstanding against the Grand Slam holders, Wales. But again, this is different gravy. As we say up north, different gravy. You're coming to Twickenham to try and beat an English side for, to win a Grand Slam. This is, this is a massive test. But they've got to go through the process, go through the strategies. They're a good side. Well, there was all sorts of movement in that line out in the end it went to the back and Peter O'Mahony but he got smuggled up and it's now with Keane Healy and Ireland do get a rare bit of possession but Murray's happy to kick that away now and this one hasn't gone far enough but it is going to be a lottery as to where it comes down it Toje though was accidentally offside but offside nonetheless their first bit of luck and it's well within Sexton's range I think he will probably go for three it's a long kick but he has got the ability and the boot to do it and as much as I said the wind isn't a factor on the ground I think it is a factor in this decision because if you look at the flags away to our left up at the top of the stadium they are blowing behind the backs of England and you're it right. is into a wind you're a weatherman in your in your extra <laughs> off um, off time off off the microphone time he goes into the corner and he's given these forwards the carrot can they reward him they need they need to they've been blown away really Lyland at the moment but again, they won't be flushed. There's a, a phenomenal amount of experience out there. Herring with the throw, and Toner takes his full six foot ten and extends it to secure possession it's there at the back for herring and ireland go to a mall and george needs to get his hands off that and he does and now england come through but come through illegally and ireland have a free play and sexton will go cross field but that's not his best effort and conway has to stop and go back slap down on the irish side still alive still advantage but doesn't look much as like is going to come henshaw will still keep playing sexton bundiaki Naki straightens the line and gets dragged down. It was Marler that made the tackle. Toner, CJ Stander. A lot riding on him, particularly with Ian Henderson, who was originally selected for Ireland, out of the game. And that one is out of the field and will come back for the penalty. It's on the full. They were playing for the penalty advantage. Well, I'm sure he'll kick this one. It's almost right in front. But again, you do lose something with Ian Henderson, don't you? You do lose that big carrying thing, and England are a massive carrying, carrying pack of forwards. Toner gives you a little bit extra height in the line-out. He's a line-out Norse. But again, this is what Ireland are going to need today. CJ Stander and whoever to go with him to carry into England's, into the heartland of England and get some position, get some territory. That's the voice of Marius Junker that you may be able to hear telling the <laughs> referee. <laughs> it's nice to be today because I didn't have no idea. It was Marius Junker, the television <laughs> match official, just letting Jacko Piper know that these are the guys that were infringing, and that's where the penalty comes from as Sexton looks to 
and it's settle it down. It, it's a split second. It's so important, is it, the breakdown? We go on about it, how many balls you can nick, whatever. But again, it's a split second that these refs have got to see someone just coming in, not from the gate, coming in from the side. 23 points in the competition so far. 19 of those came against Scotland, including a try. And this is the first opportunity for Sexton and Ireland on this Sunday of the third weekend of the Guinness Six Nations. Oh, he snatched at that, and you won't see Jonathan Sexton do that often. But that was, well, it was a shank. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. Seen him do it you've once before. It, you've watched a lot more of him than me then, but my word, that isn't Johnny Sexton. Normally so reliable. And Ireland really did need that. I know they haven't, they haven't started well, but they needed that to get themselves back in the game. And that man there, plenty of time to go, though. He won't be phased. Well, Faz... Uh, Fast senior, I should say. Big, big hit by Tuilagi on CJ Stander. Huge. That's a momentum shifter if there was a requirement for one. O'Mahony goes low and gathers the ball, but Ireland's skill set, they are very rattled out there. You can see it, Stockdale trying to turn the mistake into a positive, but Ireland, because of the line speed of England, just got themselves, and it all started with that. That's his, again, you know what, you played in any game, it doesn't really matter, rugby, if someone makes a big hit like that, it just generates a great feeling within the side. That Again, the momentum, you can see this boy now, he's carried a couple of times, he's hitting people, but Ireland is still, like you said, trying to move the ball wide. It's the Farrell way, against Wales it worked. You know, four of the top five carriers were all in the back, Stockdale, Larmo, Conway and Aki. But the trouble is you're trying to move slow ball when people are coming up in your face. Well, if you cast your mind back a year ago in this competition, as Eddie Jones looks on, well, Ireland were blown away there as well. 32-20 was the final score, but in truth, the gap was significantly larger than that. And then in a Rugby World Cup warm-up game, and they always come with a health warning on the result, but nonetheless, 57 points to 15 here in late August, early September, before the World Cup. And Ireland have some wounds in terms and scars in terms of their latest meetings with England. Just a slip, but again, going back to that game 12 months ago, we did at Indole, I think it was one of England's best performances, apart from that semi-final they just played against uh, New Zealand in the World Cup. It was just a colossal performance. They stopped Ireland playing, and I think that was the, the game that people were scratching their heads and saying, this Ireland team, are they as good as they, as they think? And for me, they slowly went downhill after that, unfortunately. But I hope this doesn't dictate the game now. Just get it in, get down, lads, get it in, get it out, and let's, let's play, because it's been a good first 16, 17 minutes. Well, for England, anyway. Ben Young's feet. Ireland get a bit of a squeeze on that English scrum. And England still have possession. Ford Farrell. And then Elliot Daly, big tackle on him in midfield. I think it was Henshaw. Double check that. Or was it Conway? It was Conway. And the mark made by Larmer over on that far side. But hopefully we'll see that hit again because the two Elagi one was impressive. This one was equally so. Yeah, and that scrum, I think Ireland will be very happy with that. It looked, for all intents and purposes, Kean Healy was getting into Sinclair. That was a uh, distinct lack of, well, a lot of power going through, and this is the hit you talked about, Ryle. Gets the kick away. I think makes the right option. Conway hits him, perfectly legal, no, nothing, nothing to worry about in there. George. An easy, comfortable, accurate line-out ball again for England and Tuilagi. Again, seeks out Sexton. He has some help, but he's still involved in that tackle and it gives England again the momentum. Herring wraps up Ford in midfield and it's there once more for Youngs and Marler, who's gone through a bit of carrying in this opening 18 or so minutes.
Farrell. Little pop pass for Underhill to come on to. And then Youngs keeps that defence guessing again. A kick though from Ford is not out of his top drawer and it sends England backwards. Johnny May almost got away, but it was a good tackle in the end from Robbie Henshaw to hold on to him and England find themselves 20 metres back, but they have the ball and there was a bit of space. Van der Fleer goes after it, but there is a knock forward, I think, in there. The referee is seen and the scrum goes to Ireland. And for arguably the first time in an exchange <laughs> off the English platform of a line out, Ireland come away with a net gain. I'm not quite sure what George Ford was doing there. He's trying to kick the ball back to May, not forward, which is um, not on. He probably thought May was waiting for it, but that's a, that's a bizarre move. But like, yeah, you are right. I think they kept their shape very well in Ireland. Robbie Henshaw did superbly in that midfield to snaggle A down onto the ball and, uh, and to stop the flow of England because it's all too easy at the moment. His front foot, they're getting ahead. Forwards are very happy carrying the ball. Ireland aren't, aren't asking them any questions, but that was better if you're a Green supporter. There's Tom Curry. 21 caps already, 22nd cap today, and all sorts of questions about is he a seven or an eight? I think everybody he's, agrees he's a he's a six or a seven, he's, a, he's not he's, an eight. He's a six and a he's, he's a six or seven, he's definitely not an eight, but Eddie's stubborn uh, and he won't be told. I know the problem is we've got su superb eights. I mean, Alex, the, the guy from Harlequins, uh, Dumbrandt, he's, he's, he's not pulling up trees, he's pulling up forests at the moment. He's raw, you're three and a half years out from the next World Cup, give the lad a go. You know, Kerry will do a good job for you because he's a hell of a player. But you lose what he can give you a seven or a six, especially what they call the Kamikaze twins in the World Cup. And the Hill and him, I, I don't get it. Well, it's Tyke Furlong who's penalised at that scrum. And any momentum that Ireland might have had is gone. And Farrell will look to ping this as close as he can. And he has pinged an absolute belter. <laughs> and Joe Marler loves that. He's just going, yep. That's where I wanted it. Five metres out. How many times must they have practised this? See French, the French game yesterday, did a front peel and scored. Absolutely fantastic. Bring back the front peel, Willem say. Will we get one from England? We'll see. Big moment in the context of this game. Ireland go. I don't know. 12 or 14 points down and it's a long long way back if it's possible at all England have kind of butchered the opportunity and turned it over Ireland been doing their homework it normally goes to Mario Toje Cruz and obviously the Saracens partners two very good I think it's that it's man again Peter Marnie. <laughs> if in doubt go for Omani stick him up anywhere he is an incredible line out specialist well done Peter yeah, Peter O'Mahony, he was under a bit of pressure at the start of this Six Nations to hold on to his place, O'Mahony, but combination of an early knock to Caelan Doris, the selected number eight that moved standard to six, means he got the opportunity, he's taken them and he's done well for his country there. I'm looking forward to seeing this, Doris, I'm sure he'll be on in the second half, he will add a little bit of oomph, you know, that's what you want defensively and attackingly. After the scrum penalty last time, this is a big scrum. And away comes Stander around the corner. And drives the legs, and it's Farrell who's singled out. Look at that, there's only one English forward in there, Mario Toje, and there's four, four Irish guys fighting to get that ball back. And Conor Murray's kick is right down the throat of May, and it gives England the opportunity to spin the ball out, and Joseph had a little look to see if there was any room, and he's found someone away, and van der Fleer flings himself at his feet and drags him down, but still forward momentum. Numbers and George, maybe it should have gone wide, they came back in tight. Young's once more, England in irresistible form at the moment. Into the 22 they go. Ireland hanging on to those tackles again. Down the narrow side once more. Johnny May, two tries against France, is hungry for more. But Ireland, well, there's the infringement of the breakdown. O'Mahony went looking for it, but he was off his feet. Rook at form, said the referee, and that's the penalty for England. Well, he took one for his team, really, because he's nearly five metres out. He could have had a yellow card for that, because that was a professional foul, and that was an awful kick from Murray, who's normally superb. But again, 
Jonathan Joseph, a lot of talk, he's playing on the wing, but he's actually dancing in the centre in that occasion. He has got tremendous feet. Uh, but again, with this momentum that England have got, he won't be exposed in any way whatsoever. Johnny May, normally fleet of foot out wide, skinning people, he's come back inside, taken the crash ball line in a sense. Look at this, it all really starts from one forward. Bit of fisticuffs, but there isn't fisticuffs these days. They're <laughs> getting to know each other. The crowd have just seen that, so they're booing, but it's two onto one. Vine's teammates and they've been around each other for a long time. CJ Stander. Somebody's nicked his shirt. Yeah. Come on, CJ. But interesting, you've got Ryan there, a great. I, I watched him in the end of 20s come through the ranks, the pathway, they'd call it in England. I love listening, you're absolutely right, right. Listen in. Farrell says, I don't want to give you I want to ask you a question, but not now, because the momentum again is with England. He wants to get on with this, get his forwards down into the five-meter line out, catch and drive and go over. But going back to James Ryan saying I've seen him come through the end of 20, same as Mario Itoji. They're gonna be the Lions second row. Stay fit, they'll be the Lions second rows. Jamie George and England. Don't even get off the ground. It goes to Laws, it goes to them all in England. Pile all the bodies in. Farrell's in there. They keep moving forward. Tuilagi's looking for it on man. He's the one who's in the middle of disrupting and he's done a good job for Ireland. Tuilagi will pick and go. CJ Stander around the corner. Johnny May screaming for the ball out wide for a crossfield kick, but I don't think he's going to get it just yet. Slowed right down. George will pick and run into a wall of green. Otoje does the clear out work. Young's off slow, slow ball. Laws, Van der Fleer and Ryan arrive. Sexton adds a shove. England go back a yard or two. Ford, now May, maybe, or inside it goes. It's another bouncer. Twice in one game! You've got to be kidding me! It looked like they were shaping the kick cross field. Instead, it was a little dink over the top. Ireland dallied once more and Daly dived in. The TMA is going to be brought in on the grounding and on the kicker. So offside and grounding are the two. Jakob Pike has got plenty going on. I and think that that's fine. You're going to have to rock and roll that. And that's that a grounding. Is absolutely fine, the grounding. Against Stockdale, what on earth are you doing? Uh, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind on the grounding. It's whether the kick, whether they... We were listening. Here's... This is it. I think they're fine. There's nothing clear and obvious, that's for sure. Farrell's ready to kick the conversion anyway. Try given. Elliot Daly scores his 14th try. It's converted by Owen Farrell and England deservedly and rightly lead it by 14 points to nil. And that's twice that that little kick in behind the defence that is up so fast to try and stop the attacks of Tuilagi in particular in midfield have been caught and then they've been caught by a bounce. It's the only way as Kean Healy gets up very groggily, I don't think he's going to be playing much part of this game. But again, no. that kick, you're right, Ryle, is to stop the rush defence, is to stop the, feet, the speed of the Irish defence. Um, and it's doing his job. 
Dave Kilcoyne on for Ireland to win his 39th international cap. Kean Healy away to our right behind the posts under which England have just scored, hobbles away with his head bowed. And there's no question that that's about a HIA or anything else. Kean Healy will not be coming back. He's limping very heavily. Ball won by Ryan, and it's there for Murray. And Conway gets his hands on the ball, but he's running into a wall of white defenders. Sexton, ball goes from Aki back to Sexton, and it's offside again. And Johnny Sexton's rattled. He's rattled, he said something to Bundy Aki there. It's just, but they, again, they're firing passes to a standing man, really. Johnny Sexton should know better to do that. They're trying to play this wide game. Wide game. I've noticed um, Conor Murray's pass is really quick and depth because he wants to get that ball out and wide, but unfortunately, they're just not, they're not putting any momentum on it. That's a sad sight, he's, he's permanently off. And that's a big blow for Ireland, losing him this, uh, this early in a game. Uh, you can see the pain on his face in that last breakdown before England scored their second try. Laws gets up and Stander tries to get a hand in and then it's knocked forward by Tuilagi in midfield. A rare scrappy moment for England in what has been a very accurate 26-27 minutes. It is, they'll be happy with that, not with that incident obviously, but again it's interesting that Keane Healy injury there because when they try when they're down so low on the almost on their blocks trying to defend these guys it's not only some of these own weight that's coming at him it's probably two guys that are latched onto him as well so you've got you could have something like 40 odd stone coming through with you visits to the 22 there have been five for england and they've been long periods of time as well two tries out of five visits that is a decent points per visit they'll be happy with that again Ireland, two victories coming here, coming for a grand slam, and they've really put the downers on Ireland. They haven't been able to, to fire a shot. It's all been from the guys in white, and we always say you get in the 22, you come away with points. Well, they've done that, in a sense, on those two occasions, and that's 14. Stander from a comfortable scrum, Sexton, then Henshaw, and then Jacob Stockdale. Well marshaled by May, there for Murray, Sexton's lost a boot, James Ryan is smashed in the tackle. Did well to hold on, and the ball should be there for Ireland again as Toner deals with Courtney Laws. Henshaw, Jordan Larmer. Ryan Murray with the box kick Elliot Daly will have to take this outside his 22 and fires it back downfield and he saw that Ireland had no one back there and that is another terrific kick from Daly outside of his try his contributions to this first half hour have been pretty impressive from England's newest fullback having said that he's been there before <laughs> He has been there, he's got a siege gun of a boot as well, he's used for the long-range kicking uh, penalties. Johnny uh, Sexton puts his boot on. They have knocked the stuffing out of, uh, out of Ireland on this Sunday afternoon. There's no question about that. In many ways, Ireland are lucky that it's only 14 so far. They are, they've, you know, but again, the mark of a good side, Andy Farrell's here to do a job. He's in a long-term job, it's a World Cup. You know, this is what everyone... It's not, it's not sticking plastic, you just want to build on something. They did that in the first two games, um, and they knew this was going to be a test. Well, it is a test so far, but it's actually how his team now responds to this scoreline and what they do. Herring and Toner do not connect, and away comes Underhill, and England go in search of more. Sinclair. They are really warming to the task now, England. You can see the confidence is flowing through the veins they're enjoying themselves out there youngs and just doesn't go to hand of to Alagi. not helped by the fact that there were numerous green shirts there to meet them but the game will continue no knock forward says the referee as aki goes after the ball and may goes to ground youngs ford farrell 
Joseph holds his line out wide. Conway puts him to ground. Van der Fleer after the ball, but he can't get his hands on it. England continue. Laws, but Ireland have got a man in. Bundiaki over on that far side, on his feet, or off his feet now, on his feet when he needed to be. And I think that's about the first time England have got isolated when they were potting the ball, in a sense. Sinclair went definitely off his front. Bundiaki was there straight away. And, and again, in this modern professional game, if you're not there within two seconds, you've got a good chance of that ball being turned over or somebody jackling over the top. And you can see Courtney Laws down there. This is Andy, Far uh, Andy Farrell. Owen Farrell uh, is just having a word with Jack of Piper about people just rolling into the way. They're trying to get quick ball, but what happens is, you know, you roll and, oh, I can't get out of the way, referee. So he's just uh, bringing it to his attention. You've got two good chopsers on that field, haven't you, with Sexton and Farrell? Absolutely. There's Bundiaki, 26 international cap, 29 years of age now. Some concern for Sinclair. Here's the tackle stats so far. 38 tackles made by England. And the dominant ones of those, the ones that have made a shift in momentum, uh, eight of them. A shudder in momentum, you're right. On the flip side, Ireland have made 67, as opposed to England's 38. But it's those dominant ones that stop any, I'll use the word again, momentum. And Ireland have been struggling to get that M word in. Dave Kilcoyne runs into Sinclair, who's clearly well fit to continue. But after three or four attempts to get some forward momentum through ball carriers, they go to the boot, that's knocked down, and Ireland are absolutely rattled, and England are absolutely rampant. Farrell, crossfield, May goes after this, Stockdale fielded well. He's saying, I was taken in the air, and May says, give me the ball and let's get on with it. I don't know whether he was actually tackled, he was touched in the air. We'll listen in. Well, that was a block down of Itoje on Murray. It is a pan. You cannot attempt anything when the guy's in the air for health and safety reasons, obviously. There's no malicious uh, intent within it. And even in slow motion, it's close. Yes, <laughs> it's a timing issue. But again, it's interesting when, when Murray, with all his experience of his box kicking that ball, one thing that Mario Toja does is charge down scrum halves a lot. So why not just put another guy back in the sta snake or caterpillar, whatever you want to do? So Toji has no chance of getting there. And it's just handing the ball back to England again. It's very unprofessional from a very professional coached outfit, really. That's a substitute, Dave Kilcoyne. Please, this club rugby, of course, at Munster over to talk to Ulster Rob Herring. Call is made. England close the gap. Ryan rises highest in Ireland. Have possession. Stander, Murray, and Stockdale is caught in midfield. Murray, Sexton, and Aki. But England seem to have that one worked out. And Aki gets caught behind the gain line. And then England go in to try and rob and almost did. Murray, Robbie Henshaw caught by a toje. And Ireland find themselves, what, 10 metres back from where they started, if not more. Furlong just wrapped up and hit hard, and it's Underhill who makes the tackle. Out wide, is there any room? Crowd safe forward, referee says play on. And the ball is kicked down the throat of Daly, and he goes back, and Murray will pick it up. Murray is caught in possession and did well to wriggle away. Just gave the troops time to come to the rescue. Cruz is penalised for coming in at the side. Ireland will take that. Again, give him a bit of breather, give him a chance to get down just outside the England 22. 
They're just being battered at the moment and nothing, they can't generate any pace off those rucks. England's 229 metres with the ball in hand so far, metres made, Ireland 111, and that tells you, I think that's the biggest narrative of statistical yep. dominance in this first half. So important, England are moving the heavy artillery around quite easily, Ireland are struggling, but now they've got a chance, they've got a plant just outside the 22, kick, good kick from Sexton, Mother's meeting on halfway. <laughs> the crowd are going to love this. <laughs> Come on, Ireland, show us what you've got. I think Devon Tone is blowing out there, isn't he? I think he missed seeing Henderson, obviously pulled out. Was it on the Wednesday or Thursday? So Tone is very, very, very experienced, but you lose a big ball carrier. Down for Murray, and Sexton feeds Bundiaki, who actually gets a little bit of forward momentum. The ball is slow, but it's there for Murray and Furlong and Murray, and it's all sorts of intricacy, but England just stand and watch and make the tackle. Kilcoin. Murray again, England up so quickly. Line speed is excellent. Henshaw sets it up in Ireland have Stander to carry and Herring to protect the ball. Murray once more, it's shuffled on to James Ryan from Robbie Henshaw and the young man gets a yard. Devon Toner just cut tree. down like a big tree falling in the forest. <laughs> Sexton, Aki, Toje just rushes up and the line speed again from England. And Ireland find themselves back on that 10 meter line and eventually that pressure, that incessant pressure causes the turnover and Young's with another little dink in behind and Joseph tears after this one and Conway does a really good job of getting in his way but still somehow Joseph claims possession and Cruz and England come across the pitch they have advantage as they go in search of try number three Daly is put to ground and Ireland are back in defensive mode and it's England's defensive mode that has created this opportunity. Well, they always say, what's the first thing you want to do as a defensive line? Win the ball back, and that's what England do. Young's forward, and Joseph out wide is Curry, and he spins out of the first tackle and almost away, and the crowd are on their feet again at Twickenham. The half-time clock is in sight, 40 minutes how they would love another one to take to the break. George in midfield, Sexton hangs on. And it's slowed down, but it's slowed down to a point that no advantage is coming, but the referee will go back over to where he had given the penalty for Ireland being offside. Well, it's frenetic out there from, a, from an Irish point of view, but from an England point of view, it's, a, it's controlled. It's just everything England are doing is superb. You've got to say, they're hardly making any mistakes. Like you said, that defensive line, was it uh, Herring coming in? He's lost the ball. Their first instinct is to play. Let's go. Jouet, jouet. Let's go with the ball. So Farrell, again, another nail in the Irish coffin. I think it's the right thing to do. Go for three. You've got plenty of time to kick into the corner, but you get in the 22, take your points. That's 17-0. They'll do with that for coming into half time. Dad bites his lip. <laughs> a penny for them. A penny says, for them. Another nail, please. Yeah. I want to see Doris come on in the second half for Ireland. They need somebody to, to give him a lift to carry. I think Tony will have to go. Who would they put in the second row? Well, Marnie can go in the second row, can't he? But again, that's not ideal. I'm just saying they're, they're going to have to do something. It's pointless waiting another 10 minutes coming into the game in the second half, and then, you know, the game's gone away from them. It may have gone away from them now. 17 points is a heck of a lot of points at Twickenham. Well, 17 points at Twickenham with an England that are in this kind of mood. It is, well, it is the steepest of hills, shall we say.
into the final minute of the first half. Owen Farrell strikes, the crowd raise their voice. The assistants their flags and the scoreboard ticks over to 17 points to nil. Penalty for England from number 12, Owen Farrell. Sexton's restart, you know, you feel Ireland just want to see a changing room and a moment to consider how they might go about stopping this from becoming a very, very bad afternoon. Conway holds on to possession. England come through the centre, but there's a big hit from James Ryan. Into the red we go. Final play, and it's half time. That's it in a half where England have been pretty awesome, and in truth, Ireland have been pretty average. Two tries for England through Ford and Daly, converted by Farrell, a penalty by Farrell, and Sexton and his team are going to have to do some serious thinking in the changing room. England 17, Ireland nil. Well, welcome back to Twickenham. We're just having a little look as Ireland make their way out. No obvious changes other than one that was enforced in the first half with Keane Healy going out and Dave Kilcoyne coming in for him, but no changes at the break. And England make their way out as well. And as they file out just below us, there doesn't seem to be any number beyond 15. So it's as you were for England at the start of this second half. And if you're an Irish supporter or you're a neutral anywhere in the world watching with us this afternoon as it is here now, last season in Twickenham, England led Scotland by 31 points to seven at halftime and that one ended up 38 all. We're looking for some straws to grab a hold of, maybe there, but so far England have been absolutely awesome. We're off and running at the start of the second half in this Guinness Six Nations game between Ireland and England, an England side that utterly dominated, both in terms of territory and general play and possession, just about every statistic you can roll out. England were dominant, and Ireland have got to find a way of getting back in it. And what we saw in the first half, Dowie, there's very little evidence to suggest that they can. Well, it's a good start from Ireland. They've, well, did they force England into making a mistake? They've made a mistake. They've got position, and that's what they need. They need territory, they need position, and they need to generate quick ball. I mean, everyone's watching this around the world thinking, yeah, exactly, but that is not easy against an England pack that are really on fire today. 16 dominant tackles to seven. They made 50 carries to 41, but it's the metres, 269 metres to 167. Ireland have not been at the races. But we got 40 minutes to go, and we watched that that incredible game when Scotland did score those 38 points. So who knows? Sports yeah. a fantastic thing. 31-7 to England at halftime in that game against Scotland last year. Here's Andrew Conway looking to get Ireland with a bit of forward momentum, and it's there for Sexton and Henshaw tries to dive through a tackle. It's there for Ireland once more, and Stander with a toe jay hanging on, and that's good work from Stander, that's proper forward momentum. Sexton with van der Fleer on his shoulder as England flood the breakdown, but it's still there for Ireland. Kilcoyne isolated for a moment, but Toner gets there. Murray, Aki, thought about the pass, takes the contact instead. Ireland almost back to where they started. Sexton, a little show, a little go, and he's the meat in the sandwich. Murray again. Kilcoyne and Itoje tries to strip the ball and he has stripped the ball and England have turned it over and that terrific work from Malo Itoje and the kick downfield 
And Lermer will have to start Ireland from all the way back inside his own half. And he almost got away. Tuilagi, one of those to get there. Ryan forced to pick and go and kill coin there. Jordan Larmer's in trouble. The referee is not holding on for a break and play. Real concern for Ireland's fullback. Hopefully he's fine. He's obviously taken a, a serious knock when he's trying to run that ball back. But again, England, every one of England's players are standing up when they need to. Toje, just a, a ridiculous tackle. Line speed off the side, and this is where Larmore goes forward and just... Oh, it's. I think it's his leg was, was caught at angles. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of power came in from both sides. It was a rugby collision rather than anything <laughs> yeah. sinister. But again, that rip from Atoji. He's come off the line incredibly fast, and then he bumped. He's not only tackled the guy, he's ripped the ball. He's done the turnover. Incredible. Yeah, Dave Kilcoyne's not exactly... <laughs> what you would call a small <laughs> human being. And Itoje, when he's in this kind of form, he is, frankly, magnificent to watch. It's just that, well, he, he plays like a back row forward, doesn't he? In, in, in the second row, he's, he's got to do all the hard work in the scrum. He's got to jump in the liner. He gets around the field like a back row forward, turns ball over. He probably drives the bus as well. <laughs> well, remarkably, Larmer He's back on his feet, and uh, looks like he's okay to run it off. Well, that's good from an island point of view, because they will need his feet if they are going to get back into this game. He can create uh, gaps, holes in defences with those beautifully coloured purple-pink boots. <laughs> Wouldn't have happened in your day, kid. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Black. Square toed. That's the voice of Dowie Morris, former England and uh, British and Irish line scrum half. Uh, as Ireland scrum half of today, Connor Murray. Just look where Bundiak is standing, exactly where I would, would want him, standing at, at 10 to crash this ball in. Ireland try and get a bit of a squeeze in the scrum, and they do get squeeze in the scrum and get an advantage from it, and on accruing back we come, penalty Ireland. Good, they saw Bundiaki as I did, so their backs would have been crying for their forwards, to, for their back row to come off there pretty early. Ireland did it, it was a little bit of a ruse, they stayed in, they wanted the penalty, they got the penalty, balls at CJ Standard's feet, unfortunately just goes out, but the penalty had been given before that, so now it gives Ireland a chance to kick into the corner and get that much needed territory. There are actually a few Irish supporters here, it's the first time I've heard their voice all Afternoon. Well, if Ireland score, you'll hear them, I think, till the end because again, they've had this nothing to cheer. No, they haven't. And that's credit to England. As I said to you at half time, of England being that good or Ireland poor, and you, you said England have been fantastic. Absolutely, no question. Front of the line out. Not surprisingly, Ireland go to the mall. And England try to sack it early before. It officially forms, but Ireland have done a decent job of resurrecting what looked like it might be gone. And it's now good body positions and uh, big legs get moving and England are finding it hard to get to it and Stander holds on. They're running out of territory over on that far side. Got to be careful that they don't run out of room, but they're on the wrong side now. The ball should be there, but it's not And Ireland got themselves into a good position, but they then got themselves in a muddle and England have turned it over. Good play from England or rubbish play from Ireland in a sense because that ball had to go. There was no way they were going to go to the line with that. It was going to be brought down. But England do a great job of swinging it sort of anti-clockwise towards the touchline. So Ireland can't go up that blind side. Conor Murray at that point now should go. It should be released. It should go to Sexton. should go to Bundiaki, crash it in. And then the forwards could could get back up on their feet and then try and uh, add a little bit of uh, power to the game but um, as it is England diffused it again um, it's not a great place to exit from but they'll take it
All right, I'll put a bit of a squeeze, as you'd expect, and the front rows go down, and the referee's going to let this one just play out. Tuolagi's shoulder to the chest of Murray, and Sexton gets himself in there. There's all sorts of... That's... Yeah, he knew exactly what he was doing. That's very unlike Farrell. Well, you can, you've heard it all. But and you can understand on the first sight here why Farrell's annoyed. He's holding on, but he's and not, Standers... He's not punching him, he's using his... He's, he's not using punching. his hand, because, again, this is just inciting Stander to stamp on him to get himself sent off, so Farrell is totally in the wrong there. No no question, it's that angle has really cleared it up, because the suggestion was he was being punched, and no, he no, wasn't, no, no, it no. was open-handed. Absolutely, because if somebody's holding you illegally, what are you supposed to do? Absolutely. Please, ref, can you get him off me? No, this is, you know, it's a full-out... 100% game, and uh, Farrell could be yellow carded for that because that's a professional foul. Right, Ireland line out. Uh, have they knocked it forward from there? Referee says no, arm stays down. There for Murray, and now Omani, and Herring on his shoulder, and England throw bodies in, but Ireland still have possession, and Kilcoyne is absolutely smashed by Underhill. Absolutely thumped. Toner goes on a run, he's ignored. Stander, as again Marler goes searching. He's told to leave it alone. Herring. Ireland inching their way towards that English line. Kilcoyne is rebuffed by Sinclair. O'Mahony. Crabbing across, but really no forward momentum from one side to the other across that five meter line. Ireland go, they're gonna need something a little bit special. You feel England shut the door again. It's been a huge defensive effort from England throughout this game, it's been a terrific weapon for them. Advantage being played now. England have made the mistake. 11 phases, it's the best that Ireland have had to offer in this game so far, they have the advantage. If they have any ambitions on this game, they've got to walk away with seven now. Bundiaki. And they won't get anything there, back will come for the penalty. Against Sinclair for a high tackle, I believe, that's why we're seeing pictures of the prop. But again, it is right in front. Three points, is that enough? No, I think you go for a scrum and you open up the pitch and you back yourself. You back this new, wide and wonderful way that Ireland want to play under Farrell. Because I think three is just not enough points for all, all the sustained pressure they've put on, all those phases. And I think it is the right decision. We will see because it's only the right decision if you score. Absolutely. And just going back, the high tackle was called against Sinclair. If you looked at that and thought mm, it wasn't really that high, there was a seatbelt tackle and you just can't do that anymore. No, but they want this one straight and strong. And then it's up to the vastly experienced. I mean, you have read in the papers, 170 caps between Sexton and Murray, something like that. Well, incredibly experienced 170 caps there on you the go. money. So they've got options all over the field. Twinkle feet of Larmore on the wide outside. You've got the, you've got the bull of Bundiaki, Henshaw. They've got a full deck. Can their forwards shuffle the pack? Crowd doing their part to support the home team. The men in white, big moment for their scrum. If they've had a weak point in this game, it's been this, but not now. They lock it out and Standard is forced to take and Murray goes and hits the deck. Quick ball, but Omani is going to have to do it on his own. He almost does. Ireland have numbers there. CJ Standard, advantage being played again. England offside. Murray. Has a little look to see what's on. Henshaw is on. Try Ireland. 
And finally, something for those in green in the stands at Twickenham to cheer. It's taken 10 minutes into the second half, but Ireland have points. They do. Conor Murray still having a word with Piper about something, but he instigated the move first off. He went at four, the, the smallest man on the pitch, and then it was again a massive just bodies going towards that line, all trying to kill the ball from an England point of view. Mario Tozier, I think, is off there, but it doesn't really matter. Henshaw just gets that gap between it's a Farrell and it's with Curry, and he knows what to do. And it's all about body position. Look how, look how low he gets there. He's a big lad, so if he gets taken, he's still going to go forward. That's a good score, and just what Ireland needed. Well, they, of course, they needed it. International try number six for Robbie Henshaw. Uh, Sexton lines up this conversion attempt and it feels like a very it was a very long time ago that Jonathan Sexton had an opportunity to give Ireland three points in the opening 10 minutes and he absolutely fluffed his lines psychologically it's a big moment for the rest of the game for the boot of Jonathan Sexton He's just off. That's twice. And that one didn't threaten either. And on a day, you feel that Ireland need every bit they can get if they're going to threaten at all. And that, in truth, is five that Sexton have left behind. And it's still a long way back. 17 points to five as Jamie George makes way. And in comes Luke Cowan, Dickey, the Exeter man, to win cap number 23. The Devonian's on. And I wonder what the Wigan is thinking. He's scratching his head, scratching his beard, he's scratching everything at the moment because Sexton normally superb. Here's Devon Toner. England will be <laughs> quick and wants to be quick to react to this because another score for Ireland and then all of a sudden maybe it's game on again from their perspective. Well, after that first 40, Ryle, if you ask me what is England's point of view in the second half, we'll at least get another two tries, get the bonus. Um, you know, and, and, and that's the job done. But again, they will put a lot of pressure on Ireland. It's still for Ireland to, to chase this game and obviously, you know, try and create some more space. And, and when they do that, obviously gaps will open up from, a, from an England point of view. England have the opportunity to go out wide on broke, and broken play, unstructured play, I was about to say. Knock on advantage over as, as a lovely sleight of hand in midfield and Cowan Dickey gets his first taste of contact forward and behind he knows what needs to happen now he needs to just say to Ireland if you're gonna do it you're gonna have to do it from all the way back there absolutely and they'd, they'd be mad to try I don't think they've got with England's defense the way they're playing it would be a you know just one of those incredible indi individual aspects and plays and that's pretty good for a oh. for a prop forward isn't it tight head prop what did Warren Gatlin call, call him when he was on the Lions tour? Uh, uh, a centre in a prop's body. Stander, another big tackle. Marler's put himself about in those close-in tackles. This one, Joseph comes all the way. Conway gets him there for Youngs and Cruz. See John Cooney as the tracksuit top off for Ireland. Come in at scrum half as Farrell goes high, high. That one's up there forever. There'll be snow on it. And it's tapped down and it's there for Tuolagi. And he's away and we'll come back, we'll come back, we'll come back. Well, he's laughing because he nearly didn't score it. But I think it's given for a forward. We're going to have to have a look at it. We're listening. It has gone forward. It's gone yard. forward. And Tuolagi was away. Watch this, did he? He what did tap a tackle him. from Murray. Neither of them knew it was done. Anyway, John Cooney in for Ireland to win cap number 11. And it makes means, I should say, Conor Murray makes way. 
tactical substitution, no injury in that one for Ireland. So an opportunity for Cooney, who many people at the beginning of the Six Nations in Ireland were calling for to start ahead of Murray. Well, you'll have seen him a lot more than I do else, but he's been on absolute on fire, hasn't he? He's been the form player. Well, yeah. he was the form player during the first part of the season, and we're about to see where we are with him right now. But I can see why you, Andy Farrell would want to keep that experienced halfback partnership to go with the new way of playing. But again, it's a good, you've got, what, 25 minutes to go. So it's a good, a good amount of time to get your impact off the bench onto the field. And, uh, you know, he can create things, hopefully, from an Irish point of view now. Cooney's feed and Ireland retreats in the scrum, which hasn't happened often. And advantage being played to England. There was a knock forward. And they off on one of those runs of his. Bundyaki goes after the ball. Uh, no, Bundyaki's furious. I think he he's feels that was there. it. Yeah, I do too. And you can understand why, but England will continue on with the advantage. Tualagi is held on to. Young's trying to get a hold of the ball. He has the ball and then he decides to double back. And that's a lovely little pop to Curry. And then. May goes through a half gap, advantage still being played, the referee confirms, Ford has to reach for it, all sorts of runners for England to use out wide, and Joseph will be wrapped up by Stockdale. I think England could have taken that ball to the line a bit quicker. Laws, Toner, Farrell, Ford, here he comes again, advantage over, says the referee. England through Itoje. Five metres short, Joseph trying to cap his 50th cap with a try. Cowan Dickey. Itoje once more. He's having a think about it. Sinclair on his back. Cruz there as well. He can't stay all there. Itoje once more. Well, England have got Tom Curry in the line on the right-hand side. If that ball goes out right, you've got a bit of support. The chariot cheer raises around Twickenham again. Ball will find its way to Daly, and a rare handling error. Yeah, he was out there as a decoy. That may would have been tackled, I'm sure. Cooney. Sweeping up like a good nine should do behind the uh, behind the line of defence. But this is something you don't do from a number eight's point of view. Is try and pass the ball when you're actually being butchered in the scrum. I don't know whether it was uh, from that occasion. Here's where I think Bundyaki. Are we at that point? No, we're not. No, I, I'm I'm with you over there because he did everything right. Uh, he went over top of the ball. I don't think we'll see it. We'll see the knock on from May, but Lamour had him anyway. Farrell pleased, Farrell Jr. pleased with what he's seen. <laughs> Tyg Furlong is going to come out of the game, means Andrew Porter will come in. Porter to win, cap number 26. And Hines comes in at scrum half for England. Hines to win, cap number 12, Gloucester scrum half. Ben Youngs will be called ashore momentarily. But it's where England want, want Ireland after that try. They want them back in their own half, right deep in their own half. Here's Willie Hines. Not a bad time to come on to a game. And if England get another try, that'll be it. They'll be going for that fourth bonus, I'm sure. Setting down a marker. And here it is, the circus carries on. 1-6-9, Marler, Laws and Youngs, replaced by Hines. Genge, and is it Yules? Yeah. Yules it is. There's Genge, the impact at Murrayfield, wasn't it? In those horrendous biblical conditions up there. He came on and made a heck of a difference. Those three have put in a big shift. There is Genge. <laughs> they love him. <laughs> ah, he's all action. He's the sort of guy you want on your team, and he's an absolute nightmare if you see him coming. <laughs> 
Yeah, you want to play with him, not with it, not against him. Oh. My goodness me. Because he's abrasive, and there's a a pep in his step and a fight in his spirits that they just aggravate you if you saw him coming. Perfect for what's required for England right now. Cooney feeds. Interesting there on that scrum. Who was it at eight? It was the bath man. Yeah, he was wearing number 20. Yep, he's Charlie gone into Ewells. number eight, which means Curry's moved to the blind side. Underhill continues in that number seven open side roll. <laughs> Curry's gone, thank God for that. <laughs> it was interesting. Steve Diamond, the director of rugby at Sale, obviously, we're... we're um, he plays, he said, he won't be playing eight. He won't be having the eight shirt for the rest of the season, that's for sure. It's one of those contentious Eddie Jones uh, decisions. Well, it's all got a bit messy in the last couple of minutes. The scrums were clean and engaging and a point of reference for this game. But right now, it's descended into a bit of a mess. Yeah, well, one thing I thought had changed with the rules is that a nine can't touch a nine. And Hines is pushing Cooney all over the place. Back in the day, he may have had something coming back his way <laughs> if he'd have done that. This is what I mean about scrums and resets and takes the momentum, takes the life out of the game. People are paying good money here. I think the lawmakers should really, really have a good look at this. Yeah, well, from England's perspective, they won't have any issue with it. It's where the game wants to be from their perspective on the scoreboard territory. And if it's stop, start and messy, they'll happily see it out. They try to get a squeeze again on the Irish scrum, which retreats and they get the advantage. And it's celebrated at Twickenham like it were a try. Well, they'll go into the corner, that's for sure. They'll use the line out, they'll use the platform. Genge again has made it, he has made an impact. James Ryan needs to step away. Well, I didn't see what happened, I couldn't hear what happened, because he's obviously said something. I think Mario Tosius has just said, calm down, pal, you've won the penalty. James Ryan's reacted to something. He, keep, he keeps powering through there, and it's okay, you've got the penalty, and then he goes... I think Just he may push. have done a bit of tippy-toes as he went round. Launchbury's coming in to replace Cruz in the second row for England. Launchbury, cap number 64, and Ireland are making all sorts of changes into the game. And Hooker will come. Ronan Kelleher for Rob Herring, and there's Caelan Doris who comes into the game. It's Van der Fleer who makes way, and in the second row, Devon Toner goes, and in comes Ulton Delan. Delan called into the match day 23 on Thursday, and Henderson was withdrawn from the 15. At the back of them all, Cowan Dickey is in there, and O'Mahony is in making a nuisance, but illegally so. Advantage being played to England. That ain't coming out of there, that's for sure. There's a penalty coming again. They'll go again into the corner. And the selection policy of Eddie Jones picking five second rows may be one of those things at the moment, because again, the, the momentum's gone out of the game, the pace has gone out of the game, but England are quite happy, as you said, Ryle. They're in the right position. They bring on the heavy, heavy cavalry, in a sense. And they'll just want to get another try here over 20 minutes in the last quarter to go. They should be on for uh, for four tries, and the bonus should be. Cowan Dickey. Ireland will challenge, no doubt about that, but the call goes to Launchbury and the mall is launched. And in couple, couple of backs, and that helps the momentum, and England are almost there, are they there? 
They are, it's Callan Dickey who's in. Try number three. It'll be checked by the TMO, but on first viewing, that should be that for England. He will check it, because a lot of the backs came in. It was set superbly by Launch Bray. It's at the back, Cowan Dickey's there, 16, you can see him, and the backs come in. And sometimes when backs come in, they get in the way of the forwards, but that time it does go down. They've broken off to the right-hand side. Johnny Mays over top of Cowan Dickey. I think they're just checking for the ground in. That's momentum, he wasn't held, that's the third try. Nothing that Stockdale could do with that amount of power coming at him. Then Eddie's a happy man. Sexton suggests momentum, or not momentum, but a second movement referee and suggest. TMO rightly say momentum exactly he can suggest what he wants and as a captain you will want to put some doubt in the mind now but there's so many different camera angles and tears and whatever that he wasn't held in a tackle so he can roll as much as he want to wants to and you do have one allowed attempt with your arm to get out there anyway so He's been perfect off the tee and continues to be. Super from Farrell, 24 points to five, three tries to one. And now England must be with almost a quarter of the game remaining thinking bonus points. Yeah. They're, they're thinking bonus points here. There's no one, there's no green anywhere in, around Cameron Dickey. So the Exeter hooker goes over and now it's 17 minutes, 16 minutes or so to see if they can get a fourth round. And they will, you know, they've won the game. I think it's gone out of Ireland's hands. Stranger things have happened, but I don't think they will this afternoon. But again, England will look to get that bonus. But they may take it as a sort of a minus after that incredible 40, first 40 minutes anyway. Keith Earls in. Jordan Larmer's gone. Earls wins cap number 84. 30 tries to his name. He's gone over to that left wing, which means Stockdale is gone to full back based on the first formation of that Irish back line. Cooney, Conway, Henshaw, Sexton, Aki, and out wide is Earls. Keith Earls goes to ground, not held in the tackle. Perfectly legal to get up and go again. Cooney dallied. If you do that at the breakdown, you're going to get killed. And it's May in a foot race. May. Henshaw came across. The crowd scream late. And the ball is dotted down. And we will go with a 22 dropout. I'd love to see this again. Oh, he's blisteringly quick. He's moved away, so that's okay. He can get it. But it's actually not so much that. Well, he is on the. Uh, the touch judge there, the referees there, they've said play on. Absolutely. This is, this is the scenario now. Is it in the act of his tackle? Ball is he knows there. exactly what he's he doing. He knows what he's doing. Slow motion always reveals it. And he had a split second to pull at least back, if not out of that. And he's got away with one there, you feel. Henshaw up quickly uh, forcing a forward pass is Andrew Conway on Elliot Daly well any 50-50 decisions going now may go England's way because I think you could have interpreted that you didn't even ask to go to the TMO there was no danger in it there was no malicious intent in it but actually what it is again it's a professional foul he's committed to the tackle but he could have pulled out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it trying to go is there a reason why the TMO and the referee didn't react to that and you, you feel that it must have been that in real time they believed he couldn't do anything with that yep. but Johnny May he's obviously electrifyingly quick he fancied himself in a foot race to get that ball but he wasn't allowed to be so sometimes again you've got to take one from the team Henshaw did he got away with it and another afternoon he could have been sitting in, in the stands having a cup of tea because he could have quite easily been red-carded. 
71 rocks for Ireland in this game so far. And the turnovers. 38% of them, that's where they're conceded. And that crucially, inside the 22 is where England have made hay. Replacement for England, coming off number eight, Tom Curry, being replacement number 21. Andrew ben Conway Hay. is come out of that collision eight, and he's not in the position to continue, which means that Ross Byrne wins cap number six, the Leinster outside half under study to Sexton at club alongside him for country right now. Sexton will move to 12, you think, and yep. Aki to 13. Yep. And in also Ben Earl, and it's Curry who's made way after a, another decent shift. Well, the rain stayed away. The wind has dropped a bit, the flags aren't going as mad as they were, so the conditions, playing conditions have been pretty good. Slight drizzle wasn't there before the, the kickoff, but... Um, and for all the momentum and capability that England showed in that first half, Ireland came out of the blocks reasonably well in the second half, got a try, but it's been a stop-start sort of second half. It hasn't had that fizz that the first half had or we hoped for in order to see either Ireland come back or indeed England plough on. Don't, <laughs> Dowie, just leave it alone. We that, know. Where's we that know. soap soapbox? <laughs> right, I've got it here somewhere. Oh, it does annoy me, though. Uh, uh, you're right. It absolutely I mean, it's just such an important part of the game. I love props. I, I drink with props. I talk to them, you know. Some of my best friends are props. But they just do annoy me because they do this all afternoon. If they, if, they, if they were allowed, they'd do this all afternoon and just drop it and then, oh, you got me on the shoulder there. Get it in and get it out. Cooney with the feed and Ireland get the penalty. The angle is what the referee says and it's against Ellis Genge, who can't help himself sometimes from just staying around for a bit more. Yeah, see he's going in with the hooker just so they go in on a on the angle, that's what Piper has, has penalised him for, but there's obviously not a great deal of love for him in the in the Irish pack. But again, can Ireland now turn this? Another score quickly, and you never know. But I think the game is gone, but they will want to now frustrate England. If they are going to lose this game, they don't want England getting a bonus. It may well, be in the so... Context, in the yeah, context in, of the championship, absolutely. Uh, France will, if England see this win out, will be unquestionably in control of the championship, but France still have to overcome the threat of Scotland away in the next round and then Ireland come to town for the final game of the championship. This one's going to bounce up for Ireland and Sexton latches onto it but the referee says not straight. Eddie very hands on. Will Stewart's getting uh, talking to. <laughs> you go on there and you push straight, that's what he's saying. Well, he's already shaking the hand, saying, well done, boys, job done. <laughs> Hard to argue with. I them. saw the Martin Basile interview for IDV, and it, was all, it wasn't quite one-word answers, but it's, he, doesn't do, he doesn't do himself many favours, does Eddie Jones. He puts a good team out, and he'll take the flak for the lads. But sometimes I don't think he needs to do what he does as much. Will Stewart into the game, Sinclair goes, and he's applauded rightly to the line. I wonder what Andy Farrell will take away from this game. No question he'll take away. We were physically bullied in the first 40 minutes. But he doesn't have the luxury of the size and impact of a pack or of an England, of a South Africa, 
of a France on occasions, of New Zealand on occasion as well. So they're going to have to come up. He is going to have to come up with something a little bit different if Ireland are to start becoming a genuine power when it comes World Cup time. Earls, crossfield he goes to claim the ball, runs it back and runs into another committed tackle this time from Launchbury. Sexton, Stockdale from full back and Henshaw at the wing position, advantage to Ireland, Cooney will dig it out, Dalton Delan offered himself but it was Porter I think who was asked to carry. Sexton, Aki, he's got O'Mahony outside him but he's going to continue on his own and that's a decent run from Ireland's inside centre. Burn. England offside a couple of moments ago. Back will go for that penalty to Ireland. Into the final 10 minutes at Twickenham. Yeah, they'll go into the corner, Ireland. Again, England's line speed is fantastic. This time it's just unfortunately too quick. I think Johnny May has been pinged offside because obviously you want to go from out to in the rush defence. If you get you know, the, your wingers or your outside centres going up first, you get that in the eye line of anyone carrying the ball. But that's the problem with Ireland. Like you said, they were dominated physically in the first 40, Ryle. And the thing is, they can't play this new game. Well, no one can't play a game, really, unless you've got that front foot. If you've got the front foot with, with Sexton and Murray, it's a different game. Um, but unfortunately, they haven't had it. They've struggled. They've still tried to play the same way, but it hasn't happened. England haven't allowed them to. Kelleher, O'Mahony, Kelleher at the back, Ireland move the point of attack of the mall and get a bit of change out of it, Kelleher's dragged down, Cooney says I want it, he's got it, Sexton, Burn, and that pass isn't going to go to hands and it could have gone anywhere, it went eventually into the arms of Earls, who's lifted a yard or two. Cooney again. Burn again. And here is Doris. Caelan Doris will come back inside. Cooney runs another terrific line. He always does. That's the strength of Cooney. Doris once more. Nice little cameo from the young man. Porter. Ball is there. Referee says slower ball. Doris once more. Tries to win the collision. Cooney again. Burn. Sexton and Aki turns his back on Tuilagi who puts him to ground. Osburn once more. Saw a little gap. Tried to accelerate through it. No change. Cooney, Henshaw and Earls on his shoulder. England will counter Rook over that and they will surely turn it over. Ireland leave a back isolated and Ireland are penalised at the breakdown. It's a microcosm of the game in a sense, isn't it? So much good from Ireland, a lovely break there from Cooney. Uh, nice to see Doris get on the ball. He's a strong, very aggressive lad at Scranton, right, but it just breaks down. You know, a couple of slow balls when they've got the momentum up, the speed of the wreck was going, and then all of a sudden, a counter wreck. It's like, it's like uh, popping a balloon in a sense. A big green balloon's been popped today. But again, England will be wanting to do with Mike Cat. He had some pretty sad days with Italy. As a coach over there, he's a cracking player, cracking bloke, but uh, he's got a lot of work to do as soon as Big Faz to fix this because you you cannot lose the physical battle. You lose the physical battle in any manner of rugby, it doesn't matter if it's amateur or professional, you've, you've lost the game. Slade comes on, and we Slade back from injury. He'll come on for the man who was also back for injury, Manatu Alagi, and we questioned how fit he was. He answered that in the first 10 minutes when he was a wrecking ball and caused complete chaos and was in many ways solely responsible for the start of the momentum for England. But he's a front foot wrecking ball, that's why he can do it. Slade, Slade is a great um, player to bring off the bench, he can change He can change up, he can play 10, he can play 12, play 13. But again, we, we joked in me a little bit at the beginning of the game, what happens if plan A doesn't work? Well, it's worked today, but there's still that question, you know, when you load a bench with with sort of no players that can change it, you, you, you do leave yourself exposed. But on this performance, you know, I <laughs> can't wait for that press conference with Eddie Jones. Sexton, Earls, nice pass. Stockdale, 
Gets the ball back inside. Cooney again. John Cooney. He's always running trail lines like that. And you've seen twice in the last two minutes what he can bring to the party. Cooney, Kelleher, Doris, his Leinster teammate on his shoulder. England in after it. Alton Delan. Delan goes to ground. Ryan. England happy just to put him to ground. Sexton, crossfield it goes. O'Mahony is the one out here. Peter O'Mahony after it, and it beats him all the way. Possibly the right option, but there was always playing an advantage for a high tackle on Cooney, and he has been a handful, isn't he? You were absolutely right. I've been hearing reports of him on fire. He's literally on fire. He's been a spark since he's come on. He's tried to ignite everything. He's quick, he's low to the ground. That's the penalty he was given from. Not quite sure who's got those blue boots, but they were always playing advantage. It was a kick to nothing from Sexton. And Peter Romani wasn't quite able to get there. But again, they'll have a chance. They'll go into the corner and they may have a chance of another try. The game's gone away from them, but they would stop England, I think, scoring that bonus point. Here's the kick. Kick to nothing. It's not going to roll Ireland's way today, and it doesn't. Taken by Ryan at the front and England in quickly dis to disrupt any opportunity of them all. And I think they've turned it over. Hines <laughs> makes the signal. <laughs> That is absolutely brilliant. Steve Borthwick um, will just love that. I know he's down as a skills coach, but Steve Borthwick is the, is the line-out Norse. Matt Proudfoot brought in for scrummaging, so, and with John Mitchell in there, all right, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a work of brilliance. They'll be playing that back 30 times tonight in the team room because it's just that's the one way you can diffuse a potential try opportunity for Ireland. You just get in, you bite down on the belt, and you just smash them back. Well, there were plenty of candidates for the Guinness Six Nations Player of the Match, but the vote has finally gone to Courtney Laws, and there is stats, eight carries, 37 metres, seven line-out wins, 14 tackles. You could have picked the man beside him. You could have picked, well... As always, I think, co collectively for the forwards, in a sense, because some days you just hold your hand up and you say, thanks, boys, you've done it. Forwards win your games, backs tell you about how much. I know it's the old cliche, I love a cliche, but it, it, it really does say it today. There's very little space out on the international you know, professional pitch these days, but they've created some today and they've silenced Ireland. A lot of people thought Ireland, well, it's going to be difficult and tough, but they gave Ireland all they could possibly do it on the performances and the way Farrell had got the team up to play. England just said, shut up, you're not going to play, mate, because we're not going to allow you. 81,476 souls in Twickenham today. A week break, of course, in the Guinness Six Nations. Ireland will go home and welcome Italy, while England have a sizable challenge next from a Welsh side that were beaten yesterday, but were beaten playing well. And this kind of form, well, as well. The template has been laid down on a dry day in Twickenham, Wales will know what to expect. It's whether they can do anything with it. And all the time, France will say, well, we've still got to go to Scotland and have no doubt an Irish side that will go to France. Uh, it's not as big a physical unit as this English side and probably compete better. I totally agree with everything you say, but I can have one point on that France and the youngsters in that back line. Oh, my oh. word. Three years to go, that's three, um, three more <laughs> years of experience. They just don't fear anybody. They have Fabio Gatti, I played against that man. He was a pretty good player as a, you know, when he was in the blue shirt, but he's a very, very good coach, and he's got them playing fantastically well. Here's Kelleher. Doris tries to find a way around a Toje, which is almost an impossible task. I'm just looking down, I think Underhill's made 21 tackles. You think Atoje's made a lot with just 12, but Underhill has been all over the shop. Here's Doris. Needs not to get isolated. Here we go, and here we go. England have an opportunity, ball in hand. Hines will dig it out in England. Remember, all the time thinking bonus point, potential bonus point. Here's Stockdale. He's going to try and get himself out of trouble with his feet and did well enough. God, 
James Ryan has done so much work. He was almost just bent double going down, collecting that ball. He's carried, he's carried, he's, he's carried for two men today. He sure has. And all the scrimmage and all the line out work as well. And the tackling. Watched by Farrell, Earls wraps him up, but Farrell gets the all flow to Daly and then it goes over the head of Ford, but Ireland are slow to come up. There's some very tired bodies out there now. CJ Standard eventually gets there and it's a tackle that will give Ireland the penalty and will probably stop England having any opportunity of getting a bonus point. And you know, on fine margins, it's, it's, at the end of this wonderful championship in a couple of weeks' time, that might be a very important moment. Well, again, it's Six Nations again, is the, I think it's the greatest competition that we've got. I know it's a European competition, but I love it. And um, yeah, it will come down to the wire. It has to. So that's one thing that Ireland can take from it. They denied England. You know, four tries, they denied him a bonus point because after that first 40, you thought, well, how many, five, six, seven, eight tries? So, they, you know, they're a proud bunch. They're learning the way that Farrell wants them to play. This is Ireland, this is. England have just gone back to type. They've gone back to the, the White Orcs. We're in the red. This will be the final play of the afternoon, presuming we don't get a penalty and play on. Delan wins it at the front of the line out and Ireland go to their mall and Kelleher has it and Kelleher has a bit of momentum going but he just can't keep his feet. Cowan Dickey tries to get a hold of it. Cooney gets his hands on it. Doris takes the ball into contact and Cooney once more and Kilcoyne drives the legs and Aki is there as well, but Cowan Dickey's positioned himself over the ball. And then the rook is formed and Ireland hold on. And it's Ireland who are looking for a consolation finish as Kelleher goes for another yard. Delan, a converted try won't be good enough to give Ireland a losing bonus point, but it will help them lift their heads as they go towards the changing room. And having been 17-0 down at half time, there's an opportunity to finish with two tries to England's three. And that in itself looked like a distant desire before the game or halfway through the game. Almost there, Porter. Can Ireland regroup one last effort from the pack? England defend their line once more. Porter goes, he's almost there, he is there! Ireland have another try. And it's consolation territory. But it's a decent effort for Andrew Porter who gets his first international points. And Ireland closed the gap, but not enough for a bonus point. Not enough. No, a little bit too late from an Ireland point of view, but they stuck to their processes, they stuck to their structures. They got a score. The game has gone from them after that first 40, but it's something to take into that Italy, Italy game, which they should really ramp up and get a bonus point from, from it. But they've denied to go back to it. They've denied England a chance of five points, and that may come back um, at the end of the tournament to be one of the best things that's happened but uh, we'll have to see there's a lot of rugby to be played from now until then but it's the first try for Andrew Porter so he'll have something to celebrate tonight absolutely he deserves a Guinness and Cooney with Ireland have fought three kicking options on the pitch at the moment they've Sexton they've Byrne and they've Cooney and Cooney's the one who will try and add the extra two on its way and up go the flags John Cooney finishes it for Ireland but England in truth the damage and all the ability and all the class shown in that first 40 minutes they were in utter control and they saw it out comfortably in the end final score England 24 Ireland 12